Hi there. For this video, we are going to recreate a fire swirl tumbler. This is one that I made for an order. It's not finished yet. You'll see the waves right here. It's not finished uh, just yet, but it will be. So I normally will start with a white base paint cup. Every once in a while, I get a white spot where it kind of separates. And so sometimes I like to change it up and do a light colored um, base paint that complements whatever I'm doing, like on a galaxy swirl. Sometimes I'll do this light yellow because it just barely peeks through. Uh, sometimes I'll do a real light blue. So I'm going to put a nice thick layer of epoxy on here. We're going to speed through this part uh, so that this video is not too, too long. So we've got almost 30 milliliters of epoxy on here. We want it nice and runny, but not so runny that it's fallen off the cup. Just thick. Watch for any dry spots. You probably saw, meh, it might've been too fast. Um, there was one spot right in here that just wouldn't like grab any epoxy. I don't know what the heck was going on. So I like to let this spin for a minute so I don't end up with one really, really thick patch. And then also make sure that the edge here doesn't have any dry spots as well. So I've got two and a half milliliters just kind of hanging out, waiting in the wings. Every once in a while, it just for some reason goes straight down to the base paint. And it just, for some reason, I don't know, it's like it gets dry and it just won't won't work. So having a little bit waiting in the wings is helpful because sometimes you need a little bit more to get some movement. And if I don't ever need it, I'm not that worried about uh, that little bit of waste. So we are going to play with a few different colors. That other cup only has four colors. I got a new one, teak wood, ginger. This one is a little bit more yellowy brown than I wanted. I used it on that little uh, coffee swirl looking one. This is honeycomb. It's kind of a yellow orange. I'm not gonna use actual yellow since I've got this as my base. Poppy field, which is a deeper red. It's not super bright. And then the calabaza orange from Pinata. So when you're doing alcohol inks, I would suggest not using any of your favorite clothes. Um, once again, I'm not following that rule. I'm wearing one of my favorite vintage shirts. I'm going to call it vintage because you know, it's like 15 years old. My favorite Simpsons uh, with the Rolling Stones logo. So I'm going to start with honeycomb just so I can kind of see what that looks like on here. And just kind of sporadic. You don't want it to look too much like a swirl pattern unless that's what you're wanting. But I notice that sometimes I just go in like bup, 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 and over and over and over and it just looks a little too symmetrical for my taste. And I don't know if you saw it, but that one little drop just popped right off of there. And that has gotten on my clothes before and I have run, ruined plenty stuff, plenty of outfits. Um, we want to make sure and address right here at the base so that it can literally drip mostly over the side. Okay, so I think that's all I'm gonna do of the yellow. This one's kinda gonna get taken over. So we can always add more later if we want it. Put the lid on in case I knock it over. I'm gonna go ahead and do some orange now. The last time I did this, I used the same brown that was in my wood green tutorial, which is just an alcohol ink from the hobby section at Hobby Lobby versus the scrapbooking section. And it's, it's all right. It works out pretty good too. But since I got this teak wood, I really want to try it out. And I do know that brown, black really overwhelms a cup. Brown can. If you get too much brown, it absolutely can. 
So that's all I'm gonna do for orange for now. I'm gonna go ahead and get a little heavy handed with the red, just because this is where I really, really want the emphasis. I totally forgot to put any orange on the bottom of the cup. That's okay, I'll get it in a minute. Don't be afraid to double up on your drops too. If you've got a big one like that, go ahead and throw another color in there. It'll do its thing. I definitely feel like those little dry spots tend to be caused when there's an air bubble coming out of the nozzle of the alcohol ink. So I think I'm gonna be a little bit more mindful of that. So before I do anything else, I'm gonna take this off of the turner arm and give it some movement, some vertical movement. You can see it's kind of all blending together right now and that's all right. So we're gonna go up and down, top to bottom, back and forth, kind of swirl it a little bit. That way you don't end up with it literally falling off one end. <clears throat> but you can kind of see it starting to make these little swirls right there. I may have to heat this up just a bit. It may not do what we want it to do. Go ahead and blast it. Normally I would have my mask on if I did that right now, I could not talk, and that would not be helpful at all. So I just have to deal with it on these couple of times. When I don't use my mask, my nose gets incredibly itchy, and I do feel like my allergies flare just a little bit worse. So you can kind of see right there, it's starting to do a little swirly gig. We'll make that a technical term. So just up and down, let it slide. But not too much where it's literally falling off. You can kind of see slow motion movement. All right, so that's good for the moment. Those are blended pretty nicely. You kind of see the little, come on. You kind of see the little up and down there. So let's start with some ginger and just give it a few little drops here and there. I don't want it overwhelming. I'm gonna go right here where I can get towards the bottom. Make sure not to touch your tip to the epoxy. You could end up epoxying it shut. Oh my goodness, that double dripped. So did that. Let's go ahead and do one right there. This one I may have to put a label on that it is uh, very freely flowing. I think I put a little bit too much orange on here because I can't really see my red, like at all. Now I've got my teak wood out. I'm just gonna go ahead and go over that ginger. I really don't care for that color. I used it on that other tutorial and ended up going over it as well. Not a huge fan. Something about it, it's just not the right shade, I guess, for my taste. But I don't want to go overpowering on this brown, which is very easy to do. So one more drop. That's all the brown I'm going to do, I think. I am going to do more red because I definitely want more of the red. And I think I might go ahead and grab my yellow ink as well. Like I said earlier, don't be afraid to double drop. Kind of gives it a little bit of dimension. Kind of see how much it's already spread. I think it's weird when it does that. It almost makes me feel like it's too watery. But I don't guess it is. It just doesn't want to play. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my yellow and let's throw some in every once in a while. This one is just sun bright yellow. I'm hoping it'll break apart and kind of make room for it. We'll see.
I do feel like it's kind of spreading apart right there. Maybe let's throw some in the middle of these other drops here. Okay, let's see what that does for a minute. Give it a little attention right here on the base. Before I take it off, I am going to go ahead and heat it up just a little bit. Don't get your heat gun too close. You can start to see it swirling right there now. Don't get your heat gun too close. There is such thing as scorching of the epoxy. I'm pretty sure I've done it. I think it's when it ends up with like waves and ripples in it. We got decent movement, but I'm not happy with it yet. I want more movement than that before I take it off. Let me see where the colors are breaking apart there. Okay. So, let's take this off. We are just going to go vertical again. You can see it moving really fast. I'm going to have to pay close attention this time to it pooling right here. If I'm not careful, it's going to just fall right off and then that's less epoxy that I have to work with. And that's just not okay. See how pretty that is? They don't all do that, which is kind of a bummer. I wish they all did. We've just got up and down. Keep an eye on this rim right here. It will fall off. It is not bashful. It will fall right off. Make sure when you're doing this that your um, cup is not on something unstable. If you've just got it on the straight pool noodle, good luck. I've got shelf liner making this thick enough to um, grip that and to fill, fill the hole or fill the void so to speak i think i want a little bit more brown i feel like the brown like ended up all on one side so let's go right here and right there where that bald spot is just kind of give it a little bit of that so we're going to do that now allow that to kind of slide around it always looks kind of ugly for a minute Little amoebas hanging out. Probably wouldn't hurt to heat that up just a little bit. Ooh, I got a blob. We have a jumper. Nope. Get back on there. It's so easy to lose track of what it's doing when you're doing other stuff. Trying to watch all 360 degrees is a little tricky. It's so pretty, but I don't think it's gonna stay. A little bit more brown. One thing too, you can get a longer drop if you do it at that angle like that. That'll make it a little easier for me to swirl this around a bit having it longer like that. I don't really think that we're gonna need that extra epoxy that we've got waiting in the wings. But I do think we need to heat this up. Just this part when it passes over, I really wanna try and leave that alone as much as I can. I think that's beautiful. Um, Kind of marbly looking almost but as this passes i'm gonna heat this up so that we get a little bit more of that uh, effect yeah so let's get that back on there for a minute get on there good gravy all right so i'm gonna be mindful of where that kind of starts and stops because I like I said I really don't want to affect this much if I can avoid it. I'm just gonna get it nice and toasty. It's 
so that it moves for me. Get the end here. One thing that might help is throwing some red right in the middle of all that. I think I'll do that. Again, I'm about six to eight inches for the most part away from my cup because I do not want to scorch it. I'm just using a regular embossing gun from the scrapbook section at Hobby Lobby. I mean at Joann's. I can make this turn the other direction for a minute. I'm going to give it a little different swirl. I don't usually work from this direction. It's kind of weird. It's kind of like riding with my left hand. I feel a little gimpy right now because that is not my norm. I don't like that dry spot right there, but there's not a whole lot I can do about those. They just happen. I think it has something to do with the ink making the epoxy separate or something. I'm not sure. I don't know the science behind it, but I'm gonna blast it just a teeny bit more and then I'm gonna take it off. Trying to avoid that pretty spot. To get this a little bit more movement and then we're going to take it off in about 10 more seconds. All right, this is probably the last time we'll take it off. It's not really doing what I want it to do. I'm just going to go vertical like this just enough to kind of force those colors to move. I'm trying to, that dry spot is gonna be the death of me, I think. Yeah, that's pretty good. Kind of touch there, not smart, but doesn't look good. See if we can't get it to blend a little. Sorry, I keep turning it the wrong direction. I don't know why that is so light right there. It just doesn't want to, it's not a dry spot. It's just no ink is getting there. I don't know what's up with that. That's all right. I'm so tempted to touch it. Maybe I'll just put a little bit of epoxy there and let it kind of blend a little bit more. That looks really bad right now, but that's okay. I'll be all right in just a minute. I wish I had two ways of holding it with two hands because it would be really nice to hold it like an ear of corn. help that along there. Just moving it, moving it, moving it. That's about the story of this song. Okay, that should be it. I mean it this time. Ah, I just dripped on the counter. All right, very nice. down. Gotta work on getting that spot right there that I just added more epoxy. The plus side is I no longer have a bare spot. The minus side is it's not wanting to blend since it's not hot in here. And I just had a suicidal bug land on this thing. <clears throat> right in the pretty part too. 
Oh, I hate you so much. I'm so careful to close my shop door that there's always that one that just lost the will to live and just has to do it. So now I've got that bare spot there to try and tinker with. Grr. I can't even blame it on country life because I see people post all the time. Funniest one I ever saw, literally. I'm not trying to get political, but somebody was doing a presidential type cup and it had an open mouth, like a speech, like they were talking. I kid you not, a fly landed an inch and got epoxied an inch from the mouth of it, like almost like it was about to fly right in. It was very funny, and of course people got political with it, but it was just the perfect placement. It would have been funny no matter what face was on there, but, you know, people have to throw their two cents in, even though that is not where the person was going with it. So I'm really happy with that overall. I'm going to address this really quickly. I didn't want to hit it with any more heat, but I'm going to have to since that is just not playing nice and cooperating. Go ahead and do that too since that's almost heal filled in. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now it's doing what I want. See, it's kind of swirling in now. It's not that defined spot anymore. So let's hold it this way so gravity takes it the other direction. Wish I had a camera on both sides. This is not nearly as red as this uh, screen is showing. In a minute, I'll go get my other light and just shine it over here so you can kind of see. I really, really, really want another color right there, so I'm gonna hold it here. Just let it kind of pull down that direction. It's kind of lowering it, lowering that yellow line. You need the yellow to make the orange and the red have lighter spots in it. But I just, that particular yellow, maybe it's because of the base I used. I don't know, I'm not a huge fan. I think that's the honeycomb. Just not the biggest fan. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much gone now. So I'm going to hold it right back upright again so that some of my epoxy that I had slide down here can go back where it belongs. We don't want our rim too bare. Yeah, so that's what we have right there. It's pretty good. That kind of looks like a smoke cloud. That one does too, but that one I feel like looks more like a wispy smoke cloud. But I'm going to put this back on the turner and let it turn for a couple of... That stinking yellow spot came right back. I guess it stays. Dang it. Alright. So I'm going to let that turn for just a minute. a little better. Video just doesn't do it justice. Yeah. It's got lots of red, but a whole lot of orange. It's really nice. I'm going to let that spin for four or five hours. I've got it really thick. I don't want to stop this anytime soon. I'll probably just give it a minute, like 10-15 minutes, and then throw it on my multi-turner so that it has um, a chance to settle and cure and I can work on something else. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. I will do my best to answer any questions in my capabilities. And if I don't know the answer, hopefully I'll know where to send you. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting videos just as often as I can. Uh, yeah. The inks I used again are Pinata and Tim Holtz, just from my starter pack from Amazon and from the scrapbook section at Hobby Lobby. 
and it's just a 30 ounce modern curve from uh, stainless steel depot yeah